So I've talked before about the dissertation out of the University of Chicago by Steve Jacobs, where he interviewed biologists around the world about when life begins. Jacobs found that the overwhelming majority of biologists he spoke to said that life begins at fertilization. And by that, I mean that the first stage of the human organism's life cycle is the zygote. This does not mean that any of them necessarily thought that abortion is immoral or that at fertilization you have a valuable human person. Jacobs was trying to establish in terms of biological facts when the human organism's life cycle begins. Countless pro-lifers have pointed to his work to show that it's not just pro-life people who recognize that fertilization is an important biological landmark. And in turn, a lot of pro-choice people have pushed back against Jacobs' work, although so far every critique I've seen appears to be by someone who hasn't read Jacobs' work. For example, one of the most common critiques of Jacobs' work that I see is that he had a low sampling error. Jacobs had sent his survey to over 65,000 biologists around the world, and 5,500 of them responded, or about 8%. But the percentage of respondents alone does not tell you whether you have a sampling error. A low response rate is a problem if it results in selection bias, meaning that the people who respond to you don't accurately represent the group you're trying to understand. So for example, if Jacobs had surveyed 65,000 biologists and only the most pro-life biologists responded, it would undermine his results. His results would of course show a pro-life answer because only pro-lifers responded, and that doesn't tell you what the average biologist around the world thinks. But in reality, if Jacob's responses had suffered from selection bias, it was in the exact opposite direction. 85% of the biologists who responded to him considered themselves pro-choice. And while it is true that the more pro-life the biologist, the more likely they were to say that life begins at fertilization, even the most pro-choice biologists still overwhelmingly agree with that statement. Specifically, Jacobs asked biologists to state whether the following was true or false. In developmental biology, fertilization marks the beginning of a human's life, since that process produces an organism with a human genome that has begun to develop in the first stage of the human life cycle. Of the biologists who consider themselves pro-choice, 80% agreed with that statement. Of the biologists who consider themselves very pro-choice, 69% agreed. Jacobs also asked the biologists an open-ended question which simply said, From a biological perspective, how would you answer the question, when does a human's life begin? The very pro-choice biologists were more likely than other groups to claim a human's life begins biologically at birth, but that was still the minority view. The vast majority of biologists, regardless of how they think of the abortion debate, acknowledge that in terms of biology, a human's life begins at fertilization. Some people then pivot from claiming that he has a selection bias issue to claiming that he doesn't have enough respondents for statistical significance. According to SurveyMonkey, if you're trying to examine a population of 100,000 people, you need at least 1,100 responses to get significance. Jacobs was trying to examine a population of 65,000 people and he got 5,500 responses, well more than enough. It's a very interesting dissertation. You should go read the whole thing.